I wonder how many singer-songwriters, if they were lucky enough to write a hit song for someone like Judy Collins, and then got offered a contract by her record company, and were in her flat in New York to sign the contract, would decide to just walk away. Well, today, in conversation at the Green Ginger Club, we're talking to the man who did just that, Judd Caswell. Well, I'm going to start by saying welcome to the Green Ginger Club, Judd. Well, last week, we had um, an Irish fiddle player who decided to write a new tune every day for all 366 days last year. You've been doing something not quite the same, but similar with your morning cordial. What started that so off? Around here in, in Maine, in in US, um, it was March, I'm going to say 13th, 14th or something, when things really shut down. Uh, restaurants were closed and you know schools said they were going to be out for two weeks. Um, and I was, of course, scheduled to, to be playing like four shows at pubs and, and, you know, restaurants on St. Patrick's Day, which I think was going to be on a Tuesday. And, and I, these, are, these are places that I've just played for years and, you know, good friends of mine um, running the places, good friends of mine working at the places. Um, it's been a big part of my work in, you know, being able to be close to home and making music has been the ability to play at places like that. And I was just so... I was just so upset and I felt so bad for them, really, for, for, for them, because that's, that's like, you know, St. Patrick's Day is their, is their Christmas, you know, it's the, it's the day that they, um, they really make a go of it on that day, right? So um, I, I, I just, I wanted to just connect, reach out to them a little bit. And so I, I had never done li live streaming before, and I just grabbed my iPad and set it on a stand and just pushed the buttons until it looked like I was on Facebook. Looking at the mountain and it seems too steep to climb. Looking at the mountain and it seems too steep to climb. It takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of time. Put one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. That's the way we climb to the memory of a rosin. Can I, can I just uh, take you, you back a bit to yeah. the Irish thing? Sure. Uh, you're, well, you're seventh generation Maine. Yes, yeah, true. So all your family came from Maine. So where does the Irish bit come? I mean, we know that you have, you know, quite a, a lot of ancestry in America is Irish. Did you check yours or did you just like the music? Uh, you know, I just like the music. I feel like there's a, a tradition in Maine and the, the Maritimes, Canadian sort of Maritimes, of that you know, of, you know, English, Scottish, Irish, um, that, that folk tradition, I think, comes down. You think of like Cape, Cape Breton, for instance, you know, uh, in Nova Scotia, where Scottish fiddling tradition um, preserved so un, unchanged that Scottish fiddlers started traveling from Scotland to Cape Breton to learn the, the real old traditional um, ways of it. So the, the music got, got planted in, in the Northeast to my understanding, you know, a, a, a good long time ago. And and it just, it feels like it's, it kind of feels like it's in the water here. It kind of feels like it's in the air here. Um, and I just, I, I don't know, I just, I sort of fell in love with it. Um, I, my first where, instrument. Yeah, go ahead. Where did you get uh, All Me a Guinness from? I've never heard that. I wrote it. <laughs> hey! Hey, oh, maybe, that's, maybe that should be our first tune we do. I wanted to play that song oh. for you. <laughs> oh, I, I, it's there for me, I tell you. <laughs> Great. Oh, once, that's the play, one I've played two or three times. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we should. What do you think? Are, are we going to play some songs? If, if yeah, so, you, that's, you, how can you, you have, have a better segue than that? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, and I'll give you, I'll give you the the whole. So the the song was based on. So you know, I had started playing more Irish Irish music and playing more Irish pubs and learning the Irish traditional songs. And I play, you know, tin whistle as well. Um, and was was just sort of fell in love with it and was doing doing more and more of it. And I thought as a songwriter, I I, I should write my own Irish traditional song. <laughs> and so I and so I studied the canon, right? And I decided that Irish music is principally about poor decision making. Often, often as it relates to, to food and drink, often, not always. Uh, and and I was reminded of this um, this story. I was reminded of a, a a comment a friend of mine made once, and so I just thought I would work it into song. Poor Mike McGuire got drier and drier as he sat. And he stared at the beer in his hand I pulled up a chair And I asked him his trouble He said, you never have seen Such a fool of a man Before I went to the bar With this pint glass for filling Old Patrick, he asked me Well, is it more of the same? And it must be the devil was up on my shoulder For I ordered this Budweiser Much to my shame Now it's cold me a Guinness, never a bitter, a brown or a red. If ever I order a pail or a porter, promise me, Patrick, you'll do as I've said, and pour me a Guinness instead. Now those Germans are proud of their precious Octobers, and the Dutch have their Heinies, and the Chinese their Ching. But it's enough to drive any good Irishman sober This beer the Americans crowned as their king Now it's poor me a Guinness Never a bitter, a brown or a red If ever I order a pail or a porter Promise me, Patrick, you'll do as I've said And pour me a Guinness instead now your black and tan lover, he's a man of half measure For half of his beer is as clear as his glass And he says it's half full, but I see it's half empty And it just barely covers his pale English bass And it's poor me a Guinness Never a bitter, a brown or a red If ever I order a pail or a porter Promise me, Patrick, you'll do as I have said And pour me a Guinness instead For Guinness is smooth as a shopkeeper's daughter Sweeter than midnight and blacker than sin And if I can just finish this tankard of water I never will stray from my Guinness again And it's pour me a Guinness Never a bitter, a brown or a red If ever I order a pail or a porter Promise me, Patrick, you'll do as I've said And pour me a Guinness instead <laughs> Hey! Well done, that man! <laughs> Thank you! Cheers! Love, love the references, particularly <laughs> the, the wrong colour, but... It's it's the wrong way. I think, just, I, I think uh, since we, well, we're kind of all over the world, but obviously a lot of our audience is, is, in, uh, is in the UK and Ireland, uh, I think you'll find that song gets covered a bit. I certainly hope so. I would love to hear about that. <laughs> You've had one of your songs, Blackberry Time, rated as the perfect song. Do you think it is, or do you think you've written better stuff since that? Oh, yeah, no, I don't think there's, I mean, one, I don't think there's any such thing as a, as a perfect song, unless you want to, like, I think an argument could be made for yesterday, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, but, or, and, and you know, there, an argument could be made for lots of songs and, and lots of time. You know, that song was, th that song was certainly the song that I wanted to write in it. It did what I wanted it to do i think you know as well as i could do it when when i wrote it um uh but uh, is it the no it's not it's not a 
it's not a perfect song. It was a very generous thing for um, Pat Patterson to say about it. Um, but it was, uh, 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 I don't, I don't agree. <laughs> I'll play it for you. You could, you could make up your mind for yourself. So to me, this was just, a, this is just a song about my backyard. And when I wrote it, there were a couple of ways I wanted to, I have a lot of memories of blackberries. And it's a, it's, it, there are some family memories in here as well. So um, I was just, uh, uh, in Maine, blackberries, uh, you pick them sort of at the height, at the height of, at the height of summer when summer's just about to turn over into fall. So that's the other part of the song. Lately I've been chasing after little things that always slip away Living in my calendar and living in my car Instead of living in the day But a wind blew down from Canada this morning Like a warning shot of cold across my bow so now I'm out here in my sandals Getting bloodied by these brambles Eating all the berries I'm allowed Because it's blackberry time Blackberry time It's a secret of a season in its prime When all the world is full and ripe and quickly going by then it's blackberry, 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 blackberry time And the air is full of cricket song and hayseed Honeybee and dragonfly The last full day of summer baked and cooling on the windowsill it Smells a lot like apple pie and up beneath the popple and the birches At the border where the grass has gone to trees I got those stains upon my fingers And an aftertaste that lingers One part sweet, one part fruit, and two parts seed Blackberry time Blackberry time secret of a season in its prime When all the world is full and ripe and quickly going by well, Then it's blackberry, 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 blackberry time I had a cup to fill to take this harvest home and to make it stay and I wish I had that recipe to press it into wine and seal the flavor of the day watching from the silver maple's branches there's a catbird who sings a hungry kind of song Says be thankful for the sweet Because you know that it don't keep You just eat what you can eat And then you move along When it's blackberry time Blackberry time It's a secret of a season in its prime when all the world is full and ripe and quickly going by Well then it's blackberry, 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 blackberry time Blackberry time things we've asked lots of people and you've played lots of different gigs Judd 
What is the worst gig that you can ever remember playing? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. You know, the th probably it was it was one. It wasn't a bad gig. I don't. I really haven't had sort of nightmare gigs. The one one that one that strikes me as as one that I felt bad about was one. I was playing in 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 Brooklyn at a at a place, and it was a pretty sparse turnout. And um, the 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 sound guy had these, you know, huge speakers and huge mixing board, and had just gone like all out for this really small room. Like the 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 sound the sound gear was too small, too big for the room anyway, and there weren't like twelve people there, so. There was just no need for the artifice of me singing through a microphone in this in this place, and so I um, I didn't I st I stopped and I was like you know you guys mind if I just sort of play like this and everyone was like oh no that's great and so I I played the show that way, and the sound man was just pissed that I wasn't using his gear he was like like and so uh, uh, literally when I stopped for a break in the middle he huffed up on stage and tore everything down and left <laughs> like packed all this stuff up and went home and i was just like that's really kind of that's kind of pissy like why why do you need to why do you need to do that like i guess i guess all that mattered to him was a chance to turn knobs for a night but yeah all right it, it's my it's my football i'm taking it home you're not using it absolutely absolutely <laughs> i love that that's a good story and what was the best gig you've ever done Oh man, the best gig I've ever done. I don't know. I guess the the one that strikes me as the most meaningful was the 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 songwriting contest at at Kerrville, at the the new folk uh, contest at the Kerrville Folk Festival, which for years I had thought of as like that was that was going to do it for me. That's, that was what I wanted. I, I knew people who had done it. it. You know, John Gorka had won that. Ellis Paul had won that. Uh, and people who I, sort of my circle of friends, even up here in Maine, like that was the one that we knew about. And if you were a folk musician and you wrote your songs, like that was the contest that you wanted to, to go to and to win. Um, and there's like 32 contestants and six winners every year. And so, and I did that in 2006, but that, that show was, um, it was a really interesting, like if I had done that, you know, five or 10 years before, it would have been a really different experience. It's, it's like, to me, having kids um, made it possible for me to, to do music the way I do it now and to be on stage the way I'm on stage now, which is um, not being at all self-conscious because I'm like, I'm still a guy who's just changing diapers at home in, in a way. There's just, there's no, no sense of, I don't know, everything, everything got more important and less important when I had kids. Everything, I could be more serious about it and not take myself as seriously. It's, I, I don't understand it exactly, but so I just remember going, walking up on this stage for this thing that had always been, I really had sort of built it up. And um, I just went on stage just super, super, uh, just very laid back about it and just talked about Maine and played, played, a, played, a, played a song. <laughs> and then... Uh, so it's a two it's a two song contest. Everybody, everybody there goes on stage and they play two songs, and that's that's it. Then they go off stage, and so I went and I played my first song, and then in between songs I said, um, you know, the funny thing about um, playing just two songs as a performer is that means you're playing your your opening song, and then you're playing your encore. And everybody sort of laughed, and I was like, so thanks, it's been great to be here. And I unplugged and I walked off stage. <laughs> and and they um and so everybody's like well encore encore so I got you know I got encore in the middle of my two song set. <laughs> hey Judd, um, why did you walk away? Well, it was it was funny. I I I I started to sort of my entrance to the to the folk music scene beyond beyond Maine was um, winning a lot of songwriting contests. That's a uh, that's a way to 
you know, get featured at, at folk festivals, get a chance to, and a, sort of a reason to go and, a, you know, a pass to the festival and a chance to meet people. And, and in 2000, I guess it was six and seven, uh, I did a, I was able to do um, a bunch of those and won a bunch of contests and was sort of traveled all over the country and just got to meet great, 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 great people. And it just, that was just the, that was the moment that sort of broke for me or the songs that I was writing and the, um, the music I was making, it, I guess it changed a little bit before then. And I wrote Blackberry Time. Blackberry Time actually was the song that sort of got me into a lot of those. And um, it just so happened that, you know, my second kid was born, you know, in February of, of 2006. And so I had a, you know, a zero year old and a three year old uh, at home in this moment where I sort of felt like I needed to be traveling more and sort of striking while the iron was hot. And I was able to do that for, I did it for a couple of years. And, and then it just felt like, man, this is the wrong time to be trying to do this. Um, and so, you know, and, and, and so I, so I stopped, it was, it was sort of easier to not, not really do it at all than it was to try to come up with some, some half, halfway point. So family. I read somewhere that you kind of made the decision when you were in Manhattan looking over a contract to join Judy Collins's label. Is that, yeah. is that so? It was right. You know, that that was in a way that that was sort of the, the high watermark for like uh, um, just what kind of a commitment I wanted to to make. You know, that mm. was a that was a um, that was sort of a yes or no uh, yes or no moment, and I, I backed away from it. Here's Please. a question I've always wanted to ask a songwriter. Uh, mm. How do you know when it's finished? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. I, I, how, how do you know when it's finished? That's I do a songwriting workshop with um, one of the big, that's actually one of the biggest sort of social parts of my, you know, the last 10 months or something has been, I've, I've had this weekly uh, meeting with um, with songwriters Uh and that's a thing that, you know, that's a conversation we've started having lately. And in part, there's this song that I've, I've been working on for some, some months now and just kind of couldn't, couldn't let go of. And, and I'm glad I didn't because I kept the, the changes that I was making were painful to make. And the song was aiming for this very, very specific thing. Um, with sort of a lot riding, lot riding on it. It was one of those songs. That I don't, I don't recommend embarking on a song where, where the emotional consequences are high for people who you care about, and the truth of it is um, indisputable and needs to be honored to people who you care about, and it, you want to make the story something that um, somebody who doesn't know those people can find meaning in. Maybe I'll stand up and sing this. This is the one that you know I got thinking of with the the question how do you how do you know when it's done? And for this one, I had to stop I had to do something to stop the writing process. And so I I shared it with the people who who I who I wrote it for. Um and that was just two di two days ago, maybe. Something like that. So this is you know, the, the song was, was changing right up through that, through that moment. Forty years since that tractor started The barn fell down and they hauled her out for parts And I, I took her home to see what might be done And if a stubborn man could make her run a drop of diesel and a little oil Weeks of patience and days of toil When I hear her running good as new now Something sparks inside me, thinks of you And I go out in the woods To work on the land with my hands When I can't cross the spans of my heart out in the woods Trying to piece back together These days that are falling apart Out in the woods And you can
can see how this looked before all the trees the wind blew down can't even fall to the floor they got tied in tangles halfway down and they can't see the sky and they can't touch the ground and lately that's a thing I understand so I, I drive the tractor down and take a saw in my hands cause I'm tied in tangles since you died and I can't feel the ground and I can't see the sky so I out in the woods hauling out dead falls to make way for stone walls to mark where you lie out in the woods working the land while I can knowing someday I'll rest by your side out in Out in the woods Cutting a hole in the sky For the sun and the rain And I'm Out in the woods To hallow this ground While the wind in the crowns Cries the sound of your name Out in the Thanks. Welcome, Thank you.